Good morning. Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church and School. Uh, we welcome those of you in the sanctuary gathered here for worship and those watching the, the stream of this service online or listening in on our telephone ministry. We're glad that you're here with us. My name is Pastor Chris Hill and with me this morning is Pastor Wayne Hebner. Uh, and we are gathered together here on this Palm Sunday and it is a wonderful day to be together here. Uh, if you are with us in the sanctuary, we do ask that you take a second and fill out an attendance card. Those cards are found in the back of the pews and they do have a side for both our members and our visiting guests, and you can place those in the offering plates later in the service. Uh, today, obviously, is Palm Sunday, and so we welcome you. This is the first day of Holy Week, and today's service includes a cantata called Amazing Love, which will be presented by uh, Salem's Music Ministry, all under the direction of Mr. John Whitmayer. Uh, we were here last night, and it is a, a wonderful blessing that our music ministry is going to be telling us about the person and work of our Lord Jesus Christ through this cantata and their singing and ringing. Uh, but to preserve the reverent character of this service, we do ask that you hold your applause until later in the service when the cantata is finished. And at that point, you will have uh, an opportunity to thank all of our musicians. We invite you to work, worship with us throughout the week here, uh, especially Thursday and Friday, Maundy Thursday and Good Friday. And we will have services that follow the theme, Be Gracious to Me. And those services will be at 2.15 and 7 p.m. And then on Easter Sunday, we will have a number of services going on. Uh, we will celebrate Jesus' resurrection at our Easter sunrise vigil service at 6.30 a.m. That one will start in the atrium, and then we will make our way into the sanctuary. And then we will also have our festival Easter services at 8 9.30 and 11 a.m. So make sure you join us for one of those services as well. And then on Saturday of this week, our men's club will be hosting their Easter egg hunt. That is at 10 a.m. and it is outside on the school soccer field. So if you have children or grandchildren, make sure you join us for that Easter egg hunt as well. And then on Sunday, all throughout the morning, as we not only gather together for worship, but we will also be having a fellowship breakfast downstairs in the fellowship hall. That's going to run from 7.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. So make sure uh, whether you get here early or stay a little after your service, uh, make sure you pop downstairs for some good food uh, as well. All of the information on our services this week can be found in our spirit newsletter and our, on our church website. And with those uh, announcements, our service begins with the ringing of the Salem bells.
Please stand and turn to face the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna amen. to the Son of David. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God the Father, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The love of God is truly amazing. It has been demonstrated repeatedly from the beginning of time as the Creator has reached out to share unconditional love with you and me. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness.
The ministry of Jesus was characterized by his extraordinary love for others. For three years, he taught, healed, served, and preached the good news. Now, following the miraculous raising of Lazarus from the dead, Jesus and a joyous crowd of followers prepared to enter Jerusalem in anticipation of the Passover celebration. The great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the King of Israel! Even as shouts of Hosanna still echoed in the air, seeds of doubt were being sown by his critics as they openly questioned the claims of Christ. Amid the contrasting scenes of jubilation and skepticism, Jesus arranged to meet with his closest followers to observe the Passover feast, challenging them to be servants in a world of need as they remembered him in the days to come. Jesus said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, 
gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In these intimate moments and the sharing of the Passover meal, Jesus spoke in sobering tones of what was to come. He spoke of these, his faithful followers who would soon fall away. He spoke of rejection and death, even amid the claims of his disciples that they would never abandon him. 
Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. The solitude of this garden of prayer was suddenly shattered by the chaos of a large crowd led by Judas, who had come to arrest Jesus. They took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, who was surrounded by teachers of the law and elders. Numerous false accusations were made during a mock trial, ultimately leading to the decision to hand Jesus over to Pilate, the Roman governor for the region. Pilate wanted no part of this lynching, saying that he found no basis for the charges. He repeatedly asked Jesus about his claims and the charges being brought against him. Ultimately, though, Pilate relented and handed Jesus over to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, also called Golgotha. Here they crucified him. 
and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. to a cross to die a criminal's death, 
Jesus, the living expression of God's incomparable love, took upon himself the hate and sin of the world, rejected, mocked, beaten, and now crucified on a tree of guilt, this sinless servant endured a final round of insults from those he had come to save. It was now the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. A man named Joseph from the town of Arimathea, a member of the Jewish council who had not supported the decision to crucify Jesus, went to Pilate seeking permission to take Jesus' body to prepare and bury it in a tomb he owned. Pilate granted his request. Pilate also granted a request from the chief priests and the Pharisees 
that the tomb be made secure until the third day, so that the disciples could not come and steal the body, claiming that Jesus had been raised from the dead. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to, the, to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. The gracious love of God was demonstrated in the sending of the Messiah, the very Son of God, to live among us. Jesus lived a humble life of love, ultimately sacrificing his life so that we might experience the gift of eternal life. That kind of sacrifice, that kind of amazing love, deserves nothing less than my very best in response. God's gracious gift demands my life my all. 
Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord.
I want to thank the members of Salem's Music Ministry for presenting the Palm Sunday and Easter Cantata. Amazing love. What a wonderful start to Holy Week. I want to thank the members of the choir, the handbells, all the musicians, and especially our director of music ministry, uh, Mr. John Whitmere. Let's express our appreciation to them. As you might expect, they worked very hard preparing for today's service, but of course, this is only the first day of Holy Week, and we invite you to worship with us throughout this season of the year. We hope that you and your families journey with our Lord Jesus to the cross and gather with us next Sunday at the empty tomb as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection from the dead. I invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings.
Please stand as we continue with prayer. (coughs) Gracious Heavenly Father, you promised to send your Son as King, triumphant and victorious. We praise you for your faithfulness. We join our voices with those who acclaimed him, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You sent your son not to exalt himself, but to humble himself. Grant us the grace to follow his example. Lead us to humble ourselves before you and to be obedient to your will. Your son faced death on our behalf alone, deserted by his followers. Grant us the assurance that by his death, we need not face death alone. At our last hour, Give us the comfort of your presence and the assurance of life in his presence forever. Your son gave his life as a ransom for all. Grant us the will to proclaim his death and resurrection throughout the world. Bless all pastors, teachers, deaconesses, and missionaries who devote themselves to the spread of your kingdom. Your son cared for the sick and the suffering. Hear us as we pray for those with special needs, including Lois Burke those who are coping with cancer, especially Carm Matera and Todd Wolfram, and those grieving the death of loved ones, especially the families of Gary Manti and Robert Mattingly. Provide for them according to your good and gracious will. Grant us opportunities to care for those around us. Help us to be generous in the sharing of our time, abilities, and treasures in Jesus' name with those whom you love. Your son rejoiced in your blessing and gave thanks for your goodness. We join in praising you with Dawn Rui, who has completed her medical treatment, Charles Gordon, who celebrates his birthday, and Mary Wolfram on her birthday. We glorify you for your wondrous love. Hear our prayers, gracious Father, for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.